Hi, this is Roger Snell, and this is a special Easter edition of my video art journal. I was thinking about how, for the first time in my life, Easter lilies will not be filling the congregations or the pulpits of congregations and Christian churches around the world this year for the first time. The coronavirus is preventing any of us from having church meetings. And so that was the symbol or what was on my mind was Easter lilies. And that simple seed of a thought inspired me to try my own Easter painting. I've seen many versions of the empty tomb and of the resurrection. Uh, usually the paintings have the Savior with Mary Magdalene uh, seeing the resurrected Lord for the first time outside the tomb. And I knew I couldn't do anything uh, convincing like that. Certainly wouldn't want to tackle a portrait of the Savior. So I tried to think in my own mind what would be the simplest painting that I could do of a complex subject. And I guess maybe that could be the theme of this video tutorial of how to think in simple shapes and values and um, to create a painting. And the trickier thing of all is to create it from imagination. Now, I did have photo references that showed what these burial tombs and caves are like. And uh, historically, and really, the, the doorway into the cave is about half the size of what anybody else has ever shown in their paintings. And the stone is not uh, nearly as large, but I kind of stuck with what we're used to seeing in other paintings with the size of the opening and, and the stone. The inspired part of the painting uh, includes a number of symbols and, and symbolism. And I still think of the greatest compliment, compliment ever paid at my first solo exhibition. And a good friend said, you don't just paint scenes or landscapes, you paint feelings and emotions. And those feelings and emotions are what I hope comes through with this painting. Um, I hope what it shows is uh, the kind of symbolism of the rising sun and the Son of God on Easter morning. The Easter lily symbolizes the resurrection and is a tradition in Christian churches worldwide. The lily symbolizes the burial of the bulb, or the crucifixion of, of Christ, rebirth in spring, or the resurrection of the Savior, and the purity of white, also symbolizing the Savior. The trumpet shape of the flowers signify Gabriel's trumpet call to new life. There is a legend that the blood of Jesus that fell at the foot of the cross miraculously caused a spontaneous bloom of wildflowers. The scriptures refer to the lilies of the field that do not have to labor or toil because of the blessing of the Savior and of life. I learned that lilies bloom wild in the dry and desert air of Israel as I researched the details for this painting. And most notably, these lilies grow the best in Jerusalem and Galilee so what I learned is that lilies are a native plant and legitimately could be in this scene outside the open tomb. Another symbol is my very faint indication of the burial clothing remaining inside the tomb. Now scholars disagree about whether the real shroud of Turin has been found, if it was the actual burial clothing uh, for the Savior. But aside from that, it would have been traditional that there would have been about a three foot long section of cloth wrapped around the bloody head of anyone at burial after crucifixion. And so I depict that very faintly by having that laying out on a stone table that you can barely see through the entrance. And the final symbol is making the dark interior of the cave purple. Purple was the color of royalty or of a king, and I wanted to symbolize that the presence of the divine king had just left the tomb. And what you're going to see now is the finishing touches on this painting. In my previous 
five episodes that I've shown you, I've done time lapse video and kind of showed you from beginning and quickly each step of the process in a painting. But on this one, I wanted to run just a little bit longer, tell the story behind the lilies that I researched and then also the symbolism that I worked into this painting. And uh, also to give you an idea of stroke by stroke, how the finishing touches come into play. Also gives me a little more time to talk video tutorial, uh, to kind of hopefully inspire others to give this a try. As you see in the painting, it really is not that complicated a scene. I've kept the stonework, uh, the stone uh, boulder, all very simple, but I worked in a variety of colors. I tried to keep the values the same in the wall and in the stone, but vary the colors to make it look interesting. I also kept them neutral and kind of grayish so that that sunshine hitting the edge of the door and the edge of the stone and on the ground in the foreground would really pop. And I purposely had the darkest part of the tomb entrance line up with the brightest part of that lily with the sun hitting it. And then you'll notice the lilies off to the far left are purposely kept in shadow, purposely kept restrained. And notice how dark and gray everything is in the lower left. And even in the path, there's a little bit of dappled sunlight on the stone path but not as strong as the light up by the entrance to the tomb because I want that attention to be on the entrance to the tomb and on that one lily which carries so much symbolism. The uh, details that I'm working on now is to spend the most attention on the focal point, the most important thing, and that is that lily. And so I'm bothering to put in all the uh, specific details on that lily and then trying to keep everything else subtle and keep it down from a bright white. Uh, as I progress you'll see me doing those final details and edges on the other lilies just to get them to, to look right and then I'll add uh, some blues uh, down in the shadow uh, of the vegetation because I also learned as I was researching about the lilies that crocuses also are a very typical native plant in Israel. So I throw some blue crocuses down at the bottom of the painting uh, or the bottom of the vegetation. You'll see that a little bit later. I, I really wish that everybody would, would give art a try and especially at a time where we're all kind of shut in and uh, maybe getting tired of Netflix and everything else. Uh, I hope you don't get tired of video tutorials like this. <laughs> I'm going to try to do one a week. Uh, I've got many paintings I did over the Christmas and Thanksgiving holidays that I have the video shot. I just haven't had time to edit it uh, and show it. So it'll take me a while to get caught up. And what I'm hoping is that I can have a a video journal uh, every weekend. Uh, at least that'll be the goal. We'll give that a shot. It's important uh, if you can subscribe and click the like button on this YouTube channel because it really does help in the reach of the video and gets it to more people, not just my friends and followers, but actually to the outside world. And uh, one other thing I, I would love is if you would share this with, with any friend uh, or art lover. Uh, and I think especially with this Easter season and that, this would be a really good one to, to share, I hope. It's just kind of a spiritual thought as we head into an Easter season where we can't all gather together. You know, all this looks pretty deliberate and slow, but actually it's just carefully laying in the final details to get everything just right. The first stages of the painting went very rapidly and it began uh, with one value and one tone, where, or not one value, but one tone, kind of that 
brownish color of the stone wall to the right uh, laid in everywhere on the panel um, not sketching or drawing anything just laying in with the brush where the stone is where the opening is the doorway um, the foreground and and concentrating on the values leaving everything in that one tone of brown but having the darkest dark brown at the cave and, and the darks and mid-tones of the stone all of that done in a monotone and in um, that brown color and then as I continued to work the painting uh, and once I had those values right I would begin to lay in the color and try to stay uh, in line uh, with the values the way it needed to be. The uh, other thing is by laying it in in that monotone and just real freely and loose leaves uh, basically sketching with the brush and sketching with oil is you can freely and easily and with no stress lay in where everything is going to go and see if it fits and see if it looks right and then when it gets to something as important as the focal point where the lilies are I just simply took a paper towel with a little bit of gamsol on it that's kind of like a, a turpentine but it's odorless and uh, used a, a touch of gamsol on a paper towel and just wiped out where those lilies would be so I had the mark and knew where those spots would be and how that would line up. And it really is much easier than you would think. Uh, I mean, I really do think this is a painting that almost anyone could tackle. Most common thing I've heard is so many people say they wish they could paint, they wish they could do this. And they said they, you know, they most often will say they couldn't even draw a stick figure. Well, neither could I. And I'm still not the best at drawing. To me, what is worse than a bad painting is to have never painted at all, to have never tried. Because believe me, I made a lot of bad paintings, and I don't make videos of those. Make a lot of bad paintings, and every once in a while you get a, a keeper. And for me, the progress has been so dramatic ever since I took those professional lessons last year that I can just markedly see my progress with every single painting. And I hope you begin to see that as well, because I honestly, at the end of this painting, as I looked at it, it kind of gave me chills. I, I kind of thought, I couldn't believe that I made this. I couldn't believe I did it, because the glow and all the things I wanted to carry out in it worked. And I think just knowing what all the symbols are in this gave it extra meaning. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, go to my website for a lot more detail and uh, look at all my paintings and work. And that's just simply rogersnell.com. And like I say on this YouTube channel, please subscribe and please click like and share it with your friends uh, as we approach the Easter season. Thanks again. Bye.